Thank you for coming out this morning. It's uh, this is a big day for first time in more than four years. This construction activity is moving forward again on this site, and with it, the hopes that the community has had for hundreds of new homes, for dozens of new jobs, and, and new retail around this block, and reconnecting streets that have been lost since urban renewal in the 1960s, and. Um, towards the creation of uh, strengthening the city financially in the school district with uh, vast new tax revenues flowing to the city and the state. So this, uh, this project stopped. Uh, I, I sometimes see people say that it stopped in 2017. From my perspective, it was really 2018 when the demolition stopped. And today, because of the hard work of uh, these three guys and, and, and many others, uh, you can see things are, are moving forward again and uh, given the level of interest in this project from the community we thought you know we didn't want to wait for some uh, choreographed uh, groundbreaking we thought we should come out and and uh, and just familiarize all of you with uh, with with how this is moving forward and um, why don't you want you want to walk people through David on the on the map here and then after we do yeah. we'll, we'll talk a little bit and then we'll, we can walk around the site a little bit and you can get other so just perspectives this, on it. Pull these little depictions together to kind of give an overview of the project. Um, everybody's seen these throughout all the planning process and the permitting and um, we've got basically there's two buildings on the site. There's going to be a U-shaped building that runs all the way along Cherry and comes down the two new streets. That's what we're calling the North Building. Actually oriented a little backwards here but the North Building it's going to have uh, retail all the way around the street level and then the podium is the the next level above retail at which that point it'll turn over to residential um, housing uh, over on this west side where you see the steel sheet piles right now that's the wing that um, we've just worked the deal with champlain housing trust and that's where they're going to be building and managing the affordable uh, inclusionary units it's it's this this northwest piece of the north building and then the rest of the north building will be market rate units and then there's a standalone building that's going in over here um, there's a the new road will be passing right through here right past that sheet piling uh, st paul street and where that <coughs> hole is right there that'll be the the lowest level it's going down a little deeper lower level of the south building uh, there'll be parking underneath that building again retail at the street it's going to be one floor commercial space, which is going to be a combination of office, uh, rental space, and then some community space that the development agreement talks about. Uh, meeting rooms for various civic groups to get together. They can uh, coordinate the use of that room through the CEDO office. And uh, there'll be a small balcony um, at that level, and then at the top floor of the south building there'll be a public observation area uh, as well as a restaurant and that's on the top of this the south building but also the white building that kind of distincts the two this is a masonry brick and this is a limestone building so nothing's changed much since um, it got permitted we're still going with it. it's 427 or so units we're working out the final floor plans right now but the square footage and the size of the project has stayed the same. Uh, the affordable units will be 85 or 86 units over in the Northwest building. And then there's gonna be about 270 or so in the rest of the North building and 70 or 80 in the South building. Um, there's gonna be a, four car, a 400 car parking garage in the core of this. It's like there's a big donut of buildings and then the donut hole in the middle is the, the parking area. And we're standing, um, we're probably standing halfway through, we're, we're six feet above, I'd say, the lowest level right here, right? Maybe eight feet. Eight feet. And then there'll be a level that you access driving off of St. Paul Street or off Pine Street at grade. You pull right into the parking level and then it'll be one above that. So three levels of parking, 200 or so spaces below grade, then 100 or so on each level. Um, and what makes this a public public private partnership in, in many ways, of course, is just to orient people is of course the on that side of the site, St. Paul Street will be reconnected and on that side of the site, 
uh, Pine Street will be reconnected partially underneath the 100 bank, bank building. Um, <clears throat> we know those streets will get built. The, what we hope and are working towards is a combination of this partnership and the TIF funds that are created by that, plus uh, additional federal funding that um, we're now pretty cautiously optimistic we will be able to receive as a result of the federal infrastructure investment um, that we will be able to rebuild four or maybe even five blocks of Cherry Street and two full blocks of uh, Bank Street behind us here. So uh, for members of the media who, you know, what, what's happened in the last, uh, I guess, a little over, it was, it was oh. Let's, well, when was uh, was when was the uh, the special meeting to approve the uh, development agreement was two weeks ago. was two weeks ago yesterday, right? Yeah. Uh, or t or today actually it was a two. Did we do it on a Tuesday? Yeah, it was a Tuesday. Tuesday. All right. So and in in those two weeks, um, what's happened is that uh, all the documents were executed. Um, there were, were a number of steps that had to happen after the agreement was signed before. The building permit could be released. Uh, the city, um, you know, significantly, these three men have all uh, given personal guarantees that the uh, podium, um, which they're starting construction on now, which, as uh, Dave just described, that that will be completed. Um, and with the completion of all, all of, of that work, the city issued last week the building permit. And um, that's why we're, there's that's work, we're work, work is moving forward now. Um, and I guess I, you know, I just want to say again a point I made uh, a couple weeks ago when we approved the the, uh, the development agreement. Development is uh, inherently um, risky, and there's un there's uncertainty to it. Uh, it depends that. Uh, Whenever a big compl complicated project like this moves forward, there's all sorts of, of challenges to it and things that change and create, can create unexpected challenges. Uh, as our lawyer said the other night, we may well, good chance that there are gonna need to be further changes to the development agreement and, and to go back in and we'll need to be talking to the council and the public again. What- um, Don't jinx this. Well, but what I know, where, where I was going with that is that the city now, has the right partners to make it through whatever challenges lie ahead. These three individuals and the companies they represent are some of the best builders we have in Vermont. Uh, they've, they have shown again and again, they know how to get projects done. They've shown that here since they took control of the site just over seven months ago. Uh, and I am very grateful to be working with, with the three of you as we, uh, as we head down this really critical uh, direction for this, the city of Burlington. Uh, I still, I've always believed in this project. This is what we need to make our downtown healthy and, and vibrant decades into the future. I don't regret for a moment any of the decisions that, that, that uh, took us in this direction. I'm grateful we now have the partners uh, to, to get to get us a podium and 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 more over the uh, over the, the the months and years ahead. Thank yeah. you for your commitment to Burlington. Thank you for believing in this place, investing in this place, and uh, putting so much behind getting this done. Thanks. I can say uh, he's talking about partners. These two guys are the best best partners I've ever had. I've had a bunch of partners <laughs> in real estate projects. Um, we we've become like brothers. We. Yep. We're not giving up. We get a little challenge. We all put our heads together. We overcome it. I mean, we had a lot of interface with the mayor's office, the CEDO office, the Department of Public Works, working through all these details on streets and how things are going to run, the stormwater and, and rights of way and encumbrances. And it's been seven months of uh, a lot of meetings. And we get a to-do list, and we break it up, and we just p pick it apart and get it done. and. That's the way this project's going to keep moving on. So thank you guys. Thank you. I want to thank the mayor as well. Yeah. Obviously he's played a big role in our success to get this far and uh, we look forward to getting concrete poured beginning of December and, and keep things rolling. So thank you mayor and thank you for your help with your office. Thank you Scott. I'd also like to say that we've heard a lot of support <coughs> from the, the community and we want that support to be there to help us keep pushing us on because we're going to need that that help in the months to come. So thank you to the community as well.
December is when you're thinking you're going to finish pouring the concrete? Start pouring. Start pouring the concrete, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll be gotta, working here all winter long. Right. It's, there's a good five months worth of uh, site work and concrete work ahead of us. Just on the south building alone. You know, we'll, we, we're starting excavation today, but we've got a solid couple weeks before we can start concrete. But we're hoping to get concrete started December 1st, and we'll be working right through the winter in hopes to have the podium slab complete in May on the south piece. And we'll work around the CHT building as we go as well. So like total the podium work into spring, summer of next year, is that kind of what people can expect? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Mid-May to mid-June, June. really. Okay. What's the timeline for the entire project then? Um, we've got that worked out for a final completion date of November of 2025. And that's when you'll see like the roads finally getting finished. So again, work depending on which way we work around, um, it's site work, then concrete work, and then the steel goes up, and then the building gets closed in, the roof gets put on it. When that happens, then we'll start focusing on, because we're gonna use this area in the middle. The, 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 the set up, uh, erecting all, all the right. steel and, and the exterior panels and setting windows and all that work. When that's finally buttoned up, we'll take the cranes away, and not for long, and then start on the garage piece, which is the infill piece. Um, and once that's all done, then it'll free up the roads. So we're gonna have a crane in the middle of St. Paul Street. We'll have a crane over in the future Pine Street to, to work the site. I mean, the site's big. It's almost 360 feet wide. So it takes, takes a, lot of, uh, a lot of stick to get all the way around it. Um, so it's gonna be real busy. And then spring, I'm, I'm thinking spring of 2025, we'll be wrapping up the big equipment work and then starting in on the roads and they'll finish the roads up over that summer and we have a completion date of uh, November. Now when they say that you've gotten the permits, are they the permits for the entire project or is it just this beginning phase? The, the project is permitted, the entire project, this, and, and then think. we've gone in um, because we wanted to get a jump on the site work and foundation this year our engineer completed the foundation plans right now. And then in the middle of January, the structural steel plans will be completed and we'll turn those over to the city for review. And then we'll, we'll do shop drawings and, and all the stuff that has to make it happen in some factory. And then that'll show up. We'll get a permit to put that up in the spring. And then by then the architects will have caught up with all of the detailing and we'll have the final set of plans that'll be you know, all the detail work, the outside, the masonry work, the windows, everything inside, all the systems. The mechanical the and electrical. Mechanical, electrical systems. Yeah, we can't forget that. <laughs> can't forget that. I'll see electrical country. <laughs> country so. so there's there's a lot of steps and we're catching up, but the project was put on ice for about two years. And um, as much as we were trying to advance it along when we were involved with our former partner, Things were just slow and, and the commitment wasn't made to getting those drawings done. So now we're doing that, we're catching up, um, but we're playing catch up right now. So the architects and engineers are working like crazy. We have weekly meetings with them and um, we get progress sets as we go, but nothing completed yet to the point where, I mean, we changed this, we're thinking we're changing a stairwell over in this building based on some, some excavation and, and uh, shoring details. So. Think things will change a little bit, and then once we stop making changes, they'll finish them up, and that's the when the exteriors will be all the same. Ex exterior is not changing, exterior. but that's that's the easy part. Yeah. That's the windows and brick and stuff. It's all all how the the columns and the chases and the ductwork and the piping and all that stuff that's inside that nobody sees. That's where they spend a lot of time coordinating, uh, and that's that's taking a lot of time. I mean, there's imagine there's 400 and 20 houses here so everybody's got to figure out all the systems and we're working on it and we're making good progress it's just uh, take some time Dave, is uh, <clears throat> all the financing in place um, that's a good question um, not for the entire project right now but we, we do have commitments on getting going on the south building uh, CHT is working through their process right now on funding their piece of it. And then we're in talks with some potential co-development co partners on the rest of the North Building. And What's the, sorry. 
uh, we'll, we'll be making the decision over the next uh, month and a half or so as which way that's going to go. And then uh, we'll have some announcements then. And Dan, I want to be clear that, you know, that's not news like we in that we talked about this explicitly with the council and the public before taking the step moving forward. What these guys have guaranteed is that the podium is going to get done. They put personally, they're putting them, them, themselves behind that and they have the, the resources to, to get that first very substantial kind of essentially foundation to the whole project moving instead of continuing to wait for that to they're committed they have guaranteed it's going to get built that the the, the foundation the podium as we're calling it will be completed that's the foundation for everything. you want to describe again what's in the podium yeah so the the foundation and podium gets everything up to street level um, on the south building gets us around the corner here and gets the this basically the second level of the north building gets us air, air rights to the to all of the the upper floors so that when we do pick that that developer uh, or partner to come in, that's when the additional funding will come in place. Another thing that happens early on, I don't think these got kind of highlighted yet, is people, when the public comes down and looks in on what's going down here, you'll see a bunch of digging on, on this side of the site and over by the building where some of the stormwater infrastructure is being, being put in. And uh, a, a lot of work gets done Underneath the streets, that that are that there will be public infrastructure infrastructure that both serves this project as well as infrastructure that is good for the broader city, um, and um, so that also goes to why the council approved. Uh, I supported the council approved this change the development the agreement that allowed this work to go forward and start right now for for the podium knowing getting back to the point before that that these guys are still in a variety of ways working on the the financing that's going to be necessary to to go vertical um, CHT is well into the process of applying for the the uh, public funds that are going to be necessary to build uh, one of the largest permanently affordable housing family projects that, that the city's had in, in decades and you know Dave just shared where they are on the on the two other buildings. What is first the first piece of construction we actually have to do is a storm tank which will serve serve the local roads and Bank Street. That's the first piece we really have to do over here before because it's lower than the building of the south building. So we've got to incorporate a lot of that initial storm work to the infrastructure and the roads at the same time. So it'll be a lot happening on the ground you won't see. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you say storm tank? Yes. Storm water. Yes. Storm water. Storm, storm water, water tanks. tanks. Retention tanks. Retention tanks. Right. It's designed to take the whole storm, store it, and then slowly release it into the city system rather than just flooding the system. Except for wow. the word storm. Yeah. It, while, uh, this is actually an often misunderstood point. So while we got the, the entire uh, kind of media core assembled here, uh, just something that often people get confused about, they say, Moreau, how, how can you be building new homes when we have issues with, uh, with, with uh, our sewer capacity? And we, we have these events where there's you know, overflows going into the lake. We, don't we have to fix that before we build anything new? What a lot of people don't understand is it's, actually every time we build in Burlington a new building to modern standards we're almost always making the stormwater and sewer system function better than they do previously because the, these these buildings meet such higher standards than the way anything that was built before so prior when the mall was sitting here and there was rain on this site immediately 100 percent of the rain immediately went right into the storm the combined stormwater sewer system contributed to this big surge of water going in the system all at once what will happen now is that water that falls during the storm will be retained on the site in these huge tanks and then slowly released uh, over time and that dramatically reduces the storm surge in terms of what this site contributes to it so it it's this actually will make it less likely that these negative events that we see uh, with these combined sewer overflows happen. Yeah, we have uh, I think over 10,000 square feet of what they call green roof, which will capture a lot of the uh, the water, and it doesn't even get into the um, storm system. Um, it'll retain it and then slowly evaporate. There's a, a elaborate drainage system, and um, it's on the top of the south building. And then a good portion of the parking garage, there's a, a, a section of green roof that just uh, helps 
cut back on the amount of stormwater that hits the, uh, the city system once it is, is released. And there's, is, there's three of those tanks, right, Scott? Yeah, yeah. How many there's, gallons are they? they are. Oh, I don't know. You, uh, no, I think they're 25,000 gallons each. There's one in the middle of uh, State of the, Art. the new St. Paul Street. There's one in the middle of the new Pine Street. And there's one that serves just the, the building itself that's um, right where that excavator is, yeah. right, right adjacent to the 100 Bank Street building. That's where he's digging right now, the first tank. What is your best, uh, you've heard a lot of numbers over the years, what's your best estimate for the total construction price? Uh, I think our budget's right around $200 million right now. That's just for the podium? That's the whole no, that's the whole, that's the whole okay, I just wanted to Which does not include Synex as part of it. Does not include phase two or phase three. Fair to say this is the largest construction project in our state? Absolutely. Is it? It's in the, it's in the top, uh, Two or three, probably, huh? What yeah. compares, right? <laughs> don't know. I don't know of anything. On the housing pieces, obviously, like housing is a very acute need right now in the state, and particularly in the county. Um, do you have a sense on when some of the units might be coming online? Uh, I think this, we had a press conference here a few weeks ago that kind of this project was going to be a big deal for the, the housing development here in the state and in the county. So, when can yeah. we start to expect to see those? The south building is about a two-year build, so if we're starting now, it'll be ready end of summer, early fall of 2024. D again, depending on CHT's timing, and we'll know a lot better on that as they go through this. They're doing a kind of a preview of the funding or a, a pre-application, and then the, the actual uh, request goes in sometime in January, and they know soon after that um, they may get their money and be able to have us start that as soon as we get the the podium in place which would probably be midsummer and that, that's about a two-year build that's about 80 units so they would be following up behind us maybe six months later on the south building and this building we anticipate would be finished up um, in the summer of 2025. The, the new road um, is part of the negotiations with the city um, after the lawsuit when Brookfield went away, um, we agreed to give the land to the city for the, the two streets. So there's a 60 foot right away. It's right off the building, the Macy's building out 60 feet, which brings us to about the middle of this last bay of uh, 100 Bank Street building. So this is probably the pretty close to the edge of the road right here. Then there'll be a sidewalk and then our building is to the east. Um, so the city's 60 foot right away. It, it actually goes right underneath the building, 100 Bank Street, and then ties back into Pine Street. Um, as part of our Sorry. development, we've got um, an area over in this corner for um, indoor bike storage and lockers and showers, um, as well as like a little repair shop if somebody has to change a tire or whatever. And then our loading dock for the south building wraps right around the corner of the 100 Bank Street building, right where the excavator is right now, um, and goes back out to Bank Street. And then retail picks up and goes to the corner of St. Paul and chugs right up um, St. Paul Street. And both, both lanes of, uh, describe how St. Pine, how, how Paul, Pine Street goes, goes past here. Pine Street is going to pass right underneath that archway, yep. and then it's going to take a little kick and, and get closer to Macy's. Um, and it's going to take the place of where the old driveway that used to take you underneath the park, into the parking garage, and the sidewalk that used to take you up to the mall, we're flipping that orientation. And the sidewalk's going to be on the east side, and the road's going to be hugging the west side, but we're coming right underneath this building, avoiding the columns, and then uh, the road's going to be down about it's like going down about three feet there, two and a half feet. It's gonna be 12 foot clear under that building. Scott, you ever built a road through a building before? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> looking forward to it. Oh, is it first? Will it complete yep. Pine Street? Yeah, it'll be a Pine Street's gonna reconnect from, from Bank to Cherry as well as uh, St. Paul is gonna go up and end at um, right where the yellow bean porch is now. And if. Uh, Uh, 
That's the that's street level. That, that's the street level, and then you can really see, at this level, or here, you can see the CHT building. You want to orient people with yeah, the this, CHT building? This wing of the CHT building is going to be coming right along this side. So right on this line, at the end of that sheet piling, basically, it's coming this way about 130 feet. And there's going to be a gap in between the buildings of about 60 feet from the 100 Bank Street building to the edge of our new building. Although the parking garage will fill in <coughs> that one, one or two levels above grade in between there. So this will read like a four-story building coming off of that building. Oops, sir. One thing I think people, uh, you don't really think about much unless you're kind of standing here or working on the site is uh, how much higher Cherry Street is than, than Bank Street. Yeah, there's about yeah. Eight, eight foot difference in grade. So you get a whole nother level right as you come down, there's another level. Uh, yeah, the, um, the, Bank Street's pretty much what, 212 roughly? 212 to 210. And that runs from 2. 218 to 216, so six or seven feet difference. So this road's going to come in, then it has to grade up um, to, to meet up with um, uh, Cherry Street. Will plows be able to go under the archway? Yeah. Little ones. Good question. <laughs> oh, nice. I think maybe the only, like, the bucket trucks sure. for, uh, like, BD might have to go around, as I remember, like, but they all, all the different right. vehicles got evaluated, yeah. Fire trucks will fit through, yes. Yeah. Well, you're fully humming here, the construction. How many people do you think will be working on this site? Um, I, yeah, yeah, the, the guess was always around two to three hundred, maybe, maybe two, two fifty. All going different same. different phases as you know there'll be a lot of site work concrete guys here then the steel guys yeah and when the steel guys are here the site and concrete guys are still going to keep going along and then the concrete guys come back and pour the slabs and then it'll get probably maximum busyness when you're doing working on the exterior building the exterior walls putting in all the windows and then a whole different crew comes in when you start doing your framing on the inside. And again, depending on how, how it flows with the different um, funding sources for CHT, us, and um, the, it's gonna be different levels of construction going on. And then, then it'll start waning off when the south building gets done um, and that same kind of crew will follow through, so. I think this winter site and concrete, we should have between 25 and 35 guys, and a lot depends on weather. It's, well, we're hoping for a warm winter. But I heard it's going to be really warm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the warmer it is, the more guys we can fit in. But you're prepared, Scott, right, to work. If, if, it, if it gets cold, you can keep moving. Yeah, and actually in Burlington, every this major foundation in the city of Burlington has been done in the winter. With the exception of the courthouse. Say that again. Uh, that's a surprising Every fact. Every major foundation in the city of Burlington in the last 20 years has been done. The concrete's been, which we've done the concrete most cases, was done in the winter, with the exception of the courthouse. So it's what we do, and we know what we got to do, and it's just uh, all about protecting heat and protecting concrete, but you don't uh, has no effect on quality and uh, keeps the team busy. You know, something we haven't talked about, uh, you want just say a little bit about um, the outreach you've done to the local businesses and, and uh, the hotline you've set up if, uh, if there are yep. things that people uh, yeah, need. Yeah, if there's any questions or complaints or comments, uh, we want to keep the complaints to a minimum, but uh, there'll be signs posted on the new fence lines. Um, we've set up uh, an email address that's info at buildingcityplace.com, um, so you can email a comment in or questions and there's also gonna be a 1-800 number and I don't know that number offhand uh, I can look it up but it'll, be it'll, it'll be on the fence it, it'll be posted um, and right now those ring right to my phone so you'll get to talk to me if, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we appreciate that it's something that the city um, in talking with uh, you know, the, the business community has been incredibly supportive. This project always has. Um, at the same time, people are aware that there'd be a lot of, you know, projects of this size, there'd be the potential for disruption and, and uh, want to make sure that there was good coordination and communication and, 
another way we appreciate the partnership is that uh, these guys agreed in the development agreement to um, to do what Dave just described and are, are making good on it. And We reached out to all the businesses <coughs> on Bank Street, including uh, 150 Bank and 100 Bank and everybody on the opposite side. Um, we put in uh, vibration monitoring systems to just check, make sure things don't get out of control. Um, they've gone through and done uh, like a seismic check to make sure if there's any cracks, uh, they're identified, they're monitored for the state that they're in, whether it's a quarter inch crack or eighth inch crack. And then um, if they if they get worse, you know, we'll, we'll monitor it over the course of construction and then make any necessary repairs if we have to. Um, Let's talk, there will be a, 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 people who've been covering this for years may remember there was talk at one point that there was gonna be months of pile driving at the beginning. Um, and there will be a little bit of sheet pile being driven, is that right, Scott, in the Maybe. next few weeks here? Yes, there will be a little bit for shoring and uh, uh, supportive excavation. But initially when this was a 14 story building, it required piles that were 75 feet deep around the whole site and the footings poured on top of them. But with the new design, with our nine to 10 stories, does not require that to spread footing. So we minimized all that vibration problems that for potential buildings and, and the residents and citizens. So and noise, yeah. it should be a pretty clean operation. This is, this is an example of sheet piling, right? Yeah, this, this is basically right. sheet that, piling. It just vibrates piling. down. It's just to support earthwork. And most of it, we still use everything here. We might need a little bit in the corner, but very little will be required. And, and with minimal vibration. So I think, yeah, I think I, that, was I, I, a, that was a test pile there. They drove that thing down about 70 feet. Right. Okay. So we would, like, we had had hundreds of those if uh, uh, on the old 1, plan or? 1,500? Yeah, there was like 1,600 of them. So, so it was a lot of vibration. It's a big change that that doesn't yeah. need to, to happen it anymore. Definitely simplified it substantially. I think yeah. just last clarify, I just want to clarify the, the phases of the project. You've got CHT handling the affordable piece and the North and South building you're looking for another another partner will help with the financing of the yeah. north building we're evaluating some proposals there's you know once once we got control of the site and, and decided we were we we're going to be moving ahead a lot of interest came from other developers that maybe had looked at it when uh, um, Cinex was contemplating selling it at one point and that's that's how we ended up he was saying all right guys i think we're going to sell the site and we said well we want to buy it so, uh, but he had a, a broker out there marketing the whole project as a, you know, first sale, permit ready. And then we just said, you know, we, we've been involved. We worked too hard to just sell it off to somebody else. And uh, so we worked out a deal with Don and um, ended up buying this. We're still partners in the two other buildings with, with uh, Devonwood. Uh, that's the Macy's High School, it's VHS High School right now. And what's left of the old mall and the LLB building. And you're on you know, the south building is the one that you're meeting up. You're not looking for a partner on that one, just no, the north building. No, we're just going to get that going, starting it. Um, we just we wanted to get going, and that's it's you know a smaller piece. That's probably uh, you know, the big picture. It's probably sixty or seventy million dollars, which is not small, but small enough that we felt we could handle it. Um, and get the ball rolling that's what this whole project seemed to need that and and so kind of lit the fuse so so when does the concrete actually get poured how much pre-work do you have to do uh quite a bit <laughs> we've got it like Sip mentioned before we got a couple weeks of excavation on the south building and working around that tank but we expect to be pouring concrete first of december and we'll be working all winter and hope to finish up the south building podium probably mid-may june We'll keep working around the CHT. So we'll we'll have multiple crews working as we go on the south and we'll be heading right around this way. So. Scott, can I get your last name and title and also your name and title? Sure. Here's Scott Ireland, president of SD Ireland. And I'm Al Seneco, president of Omega Electric Construction. Paths up from Albany. She doesn't see all the Ireland no, trucks uh, driving around. <laughs> Maybe you didn't hear it, but what is the final number of parking spots created here? I think 422. 422? 422? Yeah. 422 and 427, I think, is the apartments, right? Right. Yeah. Have you made a decision about owned versus rentals and housing? 
right now we're, we're going ahead as planned as, as rental units. Of different sizes. Yeah, it's, it's the mix of uh, efficiencies, one bedroom, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. I guess something to point out, like about the garage, um, you know, there will be a fair amount of uh, monthly leases to the tenants for parking spaces for themselves. But we're going to have a monitoring system that, as cars leave, uh, we'll be able to take in public parking, and we'll probably have a kiosk or, or some sort of scanning sign where you can park park by your plate number, and um, similar to a lot of the lots around town where you can. Um, do transient parking even though the spaces are committed to people during the day um, and we'll have a, a management system that'll similar to the city has where it'll monitor cars in and out and then um, based on some evaluation of the timing of the day and stuff um, the public parking sign will go on and it'll allow people in to pay and monitor when they leave and then kind of wean away from that towards the end of the day when the residents are coming back. So they have their parking spaces when they go here. And residents pay for the spots if they want them. It's not automatically rolled it's, into their It's apartment. separate um, from the rent. That's part of uh, one of the uh, Burlington ordinances that you can't tie a rental to a parking space. So if you don't want one, you don't need to buy one. If you need one, you buy one. I guess it's too early to ask how much the rent's going to be, or do you have a sense on uh, what the, the the rental prices are going to be for the on units? the housing on units? the units? Yeah, um, they, they they range all over. I don't know if we've settled on it. I mean, they're not coming to market for two years, so I think you know there are their market rate units, and then there's the affordable rate units, um, and even those numbers change. It's based on. Um, mean monthly income or mean annual income i'm not i'm not sure of the formula how they determine it then there's a range of like from 60 percent to 120 percent um, on the affordables and then um, the market rates are the market rates um, which you know nobody's got a crystal ball yet but um i think those we'll, first apartments will be two years from now 2024 20, yeah fall of 2024 I just, you know, um, I don't know if we'll be standing here quite like this again. So, oh yeah, I just think uh, standing here, look, looking over there, uh, look gives you a sense of um, just some of the challenges that we've had to work through together to to, to get to this point and having moving forward. You know, when the when the city tore down these six blocks and urban renewal and combined all these streets, gave up these streets, they never thought it would be reversing that, uh, that the uh, thinking at the time was that that was a good idea. And, um, you know, it's not very often that cities give up streets. It's rare to get them back once they do that. You, sitting here, you get a sense of the complexity of uh, kind of what had to be sort of sorted out to make that possible. The original, that office building was built on top of the, uh, the mall that was already there. You can see how some of the structure is still kind of sticking out and it's going to need to be shaved off. and. Uh, kind of yeah, tied, tied into to the, to the new structures. You can see the Macy's building. Never thought that that was gonna that the, the building was gonna the garage that was there was gonna come down. Um, and uh, it's uh, uh, I'm pretty excited standing here, seeing that after a decade of talking about it, putting in plan BTV, that we were gonna try to get these streets back. That. Uh, we're now moving forward again on on, uh, on getting it done. I've talked with a bunch of people. They're pretty excited about it. There's one local guy. Um, his name's Bob Blanchard. He yeah, runs yeah. runs one of those uh, Facebook sites, and I'm, I'm actually working with him. We're gonna. Um, he's got tons and tons of old photographs of the whole neighborhoods, and we're trying to conceive some sort of uh, public art project where, as you walk down the street, there'll be. Uh, pictures of the old building that used to be right there. So if you're standing here on, on Cherry Street looking south, you're going to see the house that was there, the school that was there. Um, so he's pretty excited about working on that with us too. Yeah. And just for perspective, so how much taller, I just counted, maybe wrong, but this is seven stories. How much taller will the building eventually be than this building? It'll be nine stories over so there. So it'll be two more floors probably. Yeah. 
Wow. So probably about I think that's eight, isn't it? Yeah, it's an eight. Wow. Well, the ground level. <laughs> no the ground level. No <laughs> it's a little hard to tell you, but if you count that right, right. bottom one is one. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, the difference? I think we should wrap it up. Okay. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Everyone.